Hi guys, welcome to the first part of my setup videos or help to be fast in the roof. Uh, we will start by doing the basic setup. Hopefully I will add the other parts on a later date. Hello guys, this is Papan here. I will do a quick setup video today that will work for many of the tracks. It's uh, just a basic setup for the roof. Um, I always go into free practice first to set it up. Uh, the tire pressure is all about uh, what kind of day you're, you're driving, track, etc. Just try to hit uh, 95 degrees at all times. Uh, usually you get more grip with the lower pressure, so if you do qualifying stuff like that, you can go a little bit lower than you normally would. Uh, brake pressure. If you have ABS on, always I always go for 100%. If you drive without ABS, you can go down to 74, something like that. Uh, that will uh, prevent the wheels from locking up. You just need to adjust your braking point. Uh, brake balance. Uh, you can do a 54 as well, but I think 55 is a little bit more stable. And we do Nurburgring here, so we have a heavy braking zones. If you race in the wet, you can uh, go even more on the front, so the rear doesn't slid out. Uh, brake duct uh, depends on your temperature. Try to stay below 600 degrees. Uh, just set it for 45 here. When you do qualifying, you can uh, close it uh, because you usually only do two laps. Traction control slip. Uh, if you put this one higher, the wheels will spin a little bit more. So it, again, it depends on what kind of grip you have on the track. If you go in the wet, you can put this really low. Uh, but for Nürburgring here, there is a pretty decent grip, so I have that at 11%. Downforce, again, depending on track, but I almost never use any front downforce. I think it makes the car a little bit too oversteery, uh, so I never use that one. Uh, on rear downforce, I use everything between uh, 2 and 5, depending on track, also depending on weather. Then we have the cast. I never I never do change this one, always keep it at default. Uh, steering ratio you can change if you, if that's a personal preference really. So this one is uh, on the camber. Before, we always had the lowest, it was much faster, but uh, since uh, what was it, two or three patches ago, this has been changed, so now in most tracks it will be faster to have a camber on. Uh, I use a little bit of camber on the front. It seems to be minus 1.3, that's the, like the golden, uh, the best here, so I have that on almost every track. Usually I have zero on the rear to give the best uh, traction. Um, if you're driving in the rain or if you're driving on a really narrow track, you can put on some, some camber here. Toe and angle. Uh, I always use zero on the front. On the rear, for some tracks, I go on 0 0.3. But for a fast track like Nürburgring, I keep it at zero. Uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to explain ex exactly what it, it does. Uh, it's more uh, my experience on how the car uh, behaves and what kind of time I can get out of it. So for Nubring I keep it on zero. On most tracks I would actually keep it on, on zero. Yeah. Right height, again I would say always the lowest. Uh, tracks like Spa or Bathurst you can put on, uh, you can make it a little bit higher because the, the, the track is so uneven. Or Rouge for example can be pretty hard to take with the lowest. Uh, spring rate, some prefer to have a little bit more on the front, but I like to have it soft as possible on the front. And on the rear, you can take 180 as well, but I prefer 200. It really uh, makes the car strong in the in the corners. You have to watch out for oversteer, so you have to really be on uh, on the wheel to counter if uh, if you get some oversteer. Uh, but I think it's uh, this is the fastest option. But you can go the safe route and, and do 180. I would say if you drive in the rain, do 180. Uh, sway bar. In the old days, I had both of these on, on the softest, but I think it's better to have a little bit stiffer here on the front. 
uh, seems to be faster. Bomb stops again, the lowest. Uh, and here's something new. On suspension I got uh, great help from uh, Michal 7 m who helped me do the suspension based on UC's setup file. Uh, in the old days we would have uh, everything here on soft and uh, the rest on the stiffest and stuff like that. It was uh, pretty decent but after we did this the car is so much more stable. When you do the turning you don't lose the rear as you could uh, before, now it just turns in straight away. Uh, so here are the settings for that. I can't explain what it does. Uh, I have no clue really. Uh, this is just uh, this is working. So uh, I can recommend that. I use the same for all tracks. I never change this one. I always use this setup here. Differential. Uh, really important place to adjust on, on the roof. On tight narrow tracks or in the rain always have this on a zero uh, makes the car much easier to turn if you have good grip you can go up to 12 I always uh, sometimes also use 9 but on Nürburgring uh, the grip is there so I use 12 this makes the car faster at the corner give more traction but if you go too much uh, you will lose the car every time it's impossible to control so don't go too high. I would say uh, the default is usually around this. I think that's too high. The acceleration. Also in the old days we had this one higher. I think it's better to go down to 85. Uh, it makes the car stable. When you approach a corner, you need to get used to the turning. The turn is a little bit slower if you had it uh, down here. But uh, it makes the car stable and you really need that on the roof so you don't lose the, the back end. Um, for this track here I would say 85 again if you drive in the rain you can put it up you can go as high as 95 no problem uh, preload I usually have it between 40 or 60 uh, again a little bit depending on track uh, here on 40 if it was would be a, a tighter track I would go 60 maybe even 80 uh, the leaks I drive in all have mechanical failures off at the moment so I always have the radiator at zero if you have mechanical failures off, uh, you need to hit around 110 degrees, uh, so don't put it too low. It, it doesn't mean that much on a lap, so if you, if you want to be safe, you can put it up, it doesn't really matter that much. Gearing, nothing to do there in the roof. Um, on a track like Bathurst, for example, you can put this one up. It will make a little bit of a difference. Uh, not much. Uh, fuel loads is depending on the lap, time, lap of course. Uh, just be aware that this indicator here is wrong, so you need to figure it out yourself. This one is usually, uh, yeah, this is usually way off. Brake mapping. I on almost all tracks I have the lowest here, but on a track with a lot of heavy braking zones, or if you are racing in the rain put this one up to 5 it will make the rear end more stable also if you downshift really fast you need to take this one up to 5 or else you will lose the rear end every time uh, I use a, a G27 steering wheel and I don't think I can change uh, down fast enough to this to really really matter so I'll just have it at 4 uh, and that's it uh, guys I uh, always start here in the free practice to set up the car and cut the reason I need to cut here is the video will be far too long if I don't stop here. Um, I recommend that you have a watch at either Tony R or Yoki who do really high quality videos and are a lot better at doing editing stuff and, and things like that than I am. I use uh, Windows Movie Maker for that. Um, I just want to show in the end that uh, with this setup I have done a 154.2. Uh, still a bit off Lollygag who is in, in front, but I hope to be able to beat him as well. A little bit more time for that. Um, I hope you join in later on when I do the next part. I will try to show a little bit how I work with the time trial in terms of setting up the car. 
uh, and how I prepare myself for, for league racing as well. I'll also try to do a video on how to set up the, the Logitech G27, so you have the right settings for force feedback, etc. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, hope you will join in again on a later date. And uh, see you on the track.